Thanks for clicking on the video. Welcome back to the channel, or if it's your first time, welcome to the channel. My name's Elliot Forbes. I'm a barber based in central London, and this channel is dedicated to hair, beard, grooming tips for the modern man, and ASMR shaving and haircuts. So if that's something you might be interested in, go and click that subscribe button right now. So because I enjoy doing the Ask Me Anything and just answering a load of the questions, I'm going to do some more of that today. But also, we are going to be reviewing some products. So I've been sent some products from Damon Barber. So we're going to review a couple of those and then we're going to get on to answering the questions again. And I think we're going to do much more of that going forward as well, just because I really enjoy the format and it feels and it feels quite enjoyable to film. But first off, what do we think? What do we think of this new little T-shirt? I found this in Uniqlo yesterday, a little, little Pokemon on the side here, little Pikachu we've got there. So it's a nice little detail, nothing too in your face, but I thought that was a quite nice little, little detail we've got there. Starting with the product review. So from Damon Barber, we've got the forming cream, we've got the texture clay, and we've also got the texture tonic is what we're looking at today. And for my hair out of the two, I've really enjoyed the texture clay it's a bit more of a heavier hold it is on the matte side but definitely looks like you've still got lots of product in and definitely feels as though it's sort of held into that place and as you can see by the tub i've been using quite a lot of this so i have actually quite enjoyed this you smell it and actually all of the range it's got very like a it's a very manly scent all of them this one is, is this one is really nice apparently it's fig and frankincense it is a really nice scent. You don't get the whole sense of it, say, like, continued during the day, which, like, I, would, I wouldn't expect that to happen anyway. But it, like, as you're putting it into the hair, it is a really nice scent. It, it comes out very thick. It's almost a... There's not quite a grittiness to it, but it's definitely sort of like a real tug into the hands as, you, as you're working it through the hands. And then, again, applying it through the hair, you have to really work it through just so that it doesn't clump up in any areas. So you want to build it up. I'd say you want to use less at the start and then add more to it as opposed to putting lots in at the very start just because I feel like that might then clump up a little bit. But if you just add a little bit more to it. I think that builds up the texture really nicely. It actually really reminds me of the Lilabo, the styling concrete which they use in the terms of the way that it looks at the start of the day. So I put this in about half an hour or so ago and it very much looks like I've got product in there. It sits there within that nice shape. It's got the real texture that comes out as the day then goes on, it sort of becomes more matte and more of a drier effect. So it looks like there's less product in the hair, I'd say, but definitely still keeps that same shape, still keeps the, the volume, which is something that I always really look for in a product. I hate it when during the day, it then it starts to collapse. So it does have the hold and it does have that matte effect going through during the day. It's got a real nice expensive feel to the tub of it. The packaging is all really lovely. I've also been really impressed with the texture tonic. So this is actually what I would put in before styling the hair. So I would spray this into the hair whilst the hair is damp and then dry it into the hair with a hair dryer. This again also has a really nice scent. And what's this one? This one is Oud and Egyptian Mallow fragrance. And yeah, really nice scent. Nothing too overpowering, but something that does give a very sort of nice manly scent to it or masculine scent to it. The thing I did really like about the texture tonic actually is the way that it sprays out. I haven't actually got it with me, but you can see on the little picture of it on the side here that actually it just comes out and it, it's, it sprays out very evenly and it's a really nice controlled spray to it. I think a lot of them, a lot of sprays and you see them when it's a bit of a trigger, it's almost a little bit of a, it's a little bit hard to hold in some certain places, but actually the way that this sprays out is very nice. When you're drying it into the hair, it doesn't really give a very sort of dry, brittle feel, which a lot of sea salt sprays can do. It almost gives a, a a little bit of a stickiness, but not in a not really in a bad way. It's sort of just, it feels as though there's some product in there and it's got some grip to it, but not really as though it's sort of sticky and clumpy in any way. It feels like it creates like a nice base for them being able to put some product into it. The forming cream, again, it has a very nice scent to it. What's the forming? The forming cream's got a bit of a different scent to it. It is, yeah, Oud and Egyptian Mallow, actually. So, yeah, so the same as the same as the texture tonic. Again, really nice. I haven't used lots of this because it's, for my hair, it's a little bit softer and it has, definitely has less hold to it. On my hair, I feel like I always need a lot of hold to it. But say if you want something a little bit more natural, a little bit more of a softer feel, I think this would work really nicely. But uh, as, a, as a three products, yeah, really quite nice. And definitely the, the texture clay is something I've really enjoyed using. So would definitely give that one a go again. Okay, now into the question. So, question is, what made you want to be a barber? And I love that fresh feeling when you walk out of a barber shop, when you feel great, you feel just had your hair cut, you feel like you've got so much confidence, you, su you stand up taller, your shoulders sit back. And now I love that feeling. So if I can try and make people feel that same way, that was that was something that massively attracted me to the job. Giving someone that confidence, they feel they look great. Hopefully they do look great. And yeah, I think it's, it's, it's very nice to try and make someone feel good. So that was one of the reasons. Another reason was that I just always loved doing my own hair. I'd always loved playing with my hair, styling my hair, trying to make my hair look good. So it seemed very natural for me then to, to try and get involved with it. Another reason, which sort of goes against the first reason, was one was that I actually went through a period of time where I was getting lots of bad haircuts and I couldn't work out why I was getting bad haircuts. I just kept consistently 
just been walking out there and just being disappointed because clearly I was saying something wrong or people weren't doing the consultation correct enough for me. So I kind of wanted to learn so I could tell the barber what I wanted better. And also if I wasn't getting the consultation right in terms of people asking me the questions, then I wanted to sort of try and do something about it. I was frustrated that I wasn't getting the consultation. So I just thought, well, I can do this better than what I'm getting. So that was another reason that, that spurred me on to try and learn about it as well, because I felt like I could do this a lot better than what the what the haircuts and what the, the services that I'm actually getting. So it felt very easy and very natural to be like, right, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. I finished playing golf when I was about 23 or 24 or so. And then I, I spent a couple of years working for my dad, I think. And then it was probably a year before starting to cut hair that I actually decided that I was going to get involved with the hair world and go and move to London and do the course and then hopefully have a career in hair. Yeah, so it probably took me like a full year of sort of plucking up the courage to, to tell dad or to, to actually take that next step on doing it even though I was so sure of that's what it was going to do it's I find it very easy to procrastinate at times so it was, uh, I often put things off that I don't really enjoy the idea of doing so the idea of having to tell dad that I was going to move or the idea of completely moving town or not that I was scared of that because actually I was so excited to move down to London and it was something I'd wanted to do for years I guess it was just the it's easier to keep doing what you're doing isn't it rather than really change but yes yeah, five and a bit years later now I'm very happy that that uh, decision was made the next one, has anyone ever gotten so sleepy and ended up falling asleep while cutting, shaving their hair? Whilst cutting hair, yeah, definitely there's been people that have fallen asleep. I'd say less so in the last few years, but more so when I first started cutting hair, when I was working in more busier barbershops. In the busier barbershops, you're not always like, talking one-on-one -on -one to the client. So I definitely think there was times where busy London life, the person comes in from having a busy job, they just want to sit down and just the head starts going. So you have to sort of always keep like propping their head up, but like they keep going. Yeah, the last few years, it's very much sort of been in an environment where there's no one else around so if if say if we're not talking it's a bit it would be a bit of a weird experience but also everyone i've been cutting virtually over the last few years has been been a friend rather than say a customer so it's it's kind of like catching up with friends so you are always talking so there's been less of that over the last few years while shaving i think a lot of people probably get very tired and very sort of like close their eyes and are very relaxed but i don't know if they really fall asleep because also at the end of the day you still do have a razor near your face <laughs> and also I'm moving your head around quite a lot as well and sort of I think it is very relaxing but the idea of falling asleep I don't think anyone ever like fully falls asleep I think probably during the massage so when I'm doing the upper body massage there'll be a hot towel on and you go through that which actually you don't see in any of the videos so normally I'll do like a full upper body massage I think that would probably be a time when someone would fall asleep but yeah I think everyone just gets more relaxed rather than falling asleep per se <laughs> how can I make my hair more soft and adjustable? Something a lot of us guys don't tend to do is actually use conditioner after shampooing our hair. And a lot of people will only use a body wash. So something I would say, make sure after every time you wash your hair, you are using a conditioner. That's so important to keep the hair soft and conditioned and nourished. If you are using a conditioner and you still feel like it's not very soft, then you can use hair masks, something you can put on your hair, which you put on for like 20 minutes or so. That helps to really hydrate and nourish the hair. Spray in a leave-in conditioner. Again, that just softens it down. Make sure you're not using any really harsh hair products or any really harsh, say, shampoos or any really harsh body washes. If you use body wash or if you use something like, there was periods of time where I, years ago, I would actually use fairly washing up liquid in my hair so no doubt my hair would have been super dry because it just strips everything off the hair when it's like that you want something that's, that will obviously clean the hair but something that's not just going to absolutely rip everything out of it but if you want it to then to be adjustable as well then maybe you want to use something like a grooming cream Baxter's do a really nice grooming cream which you can just apply to the hair whilst the hair's damp it gives it a little bit of hold but during the day you can still sort of move it around run your hands through it and it's it's, it's adjustable still it, it would be more so if you've got a little bit more length to the hair and you want it to, to be soft and soft and to play around with it that would work very nicely yeah so something like that's very soft but nourishes and gives has got some good ingredients to it how do i slick my hair back so it doesn't puff up after drying so this is a real common problem people when they blow dry the hair that it end up getting really poofy and really big if they're not careful with it so if you want it slicked back and you don't want it to have any volume to it then there's a couple of different options to it you can either put something like quite heavy product into the hair whilst the hair is still damp run your hands through it, get it all sitting back nicely so the hair has still got the, the water in there and the product. And then once it's sort of into place, let that sort of dry into it. If that's not really an option, it feels like the hair's too wet and too long for it to really do that. And you do need to dry it. Then what I would make sure and do is use something that is like a strong pre-styler. Then something like a mousse, work that into the hair. Now you want to use a brush, which is as flat as possible. So if the, if the brush is flat, when we're looking at say the actual bristles that come out of it, 
or the teeth that come out of it, that should be as flat as possible. So you want something like a paddle brush and that's gonna get it sitting back. The more roundness a brush has, the more lift and volume you're gonna get with that. So you want the paddle brush going into the hair and the dryer just following it very gently. You don't wanna be lifting up or picking the hair up at all. We just wanna be going back very slowly, very softly with it. You wanna keep the root as flat to the head as possible. And that hopefully will make sure it doesn't sit really big and poofy. What is the name of your haircut? It doesn't really have a name to it, I'd say, but what I tend to do, so I cut this yesterday, actually, so it's a skin fade on the sides. I put the zero line right in the middle, and then we'll use the foils sort of going down underneath it. I tend to fade it quite high up, so the 0.5 will go high up, and the 1 will go high as well, still keeping that nice square shape to it. The front is longer than what we can have towards the back, so it gradually gets shorter, so it's a triangular length in through the top. There's a disconnection either side, so we have the left and right disconnected, so it's got that extra length to be able to come up over. Now, I actually keep a smidgen of disconnection in behind it as well, less so than what I have at the front, but I have disconnection here because when I push the hair forward, that then keeps it nice and square. Say if, I to say if I was to completely connect this all in and have no overhang, what you would find is actually when I pushed it forward, it would sit really quite round, which is something I don't like at all. I like having a nice square corner, and I like really seeing this nice shape built up from the side there as well. I keep quite a lot of sh I keep quite a lot of length in through the crown as well, so that can sit really nice and textured with a bit of volume in through there. We'll always then use some sort of pre-styler into the hair, blow dry into it so it gives that volume from the very start and can almost smooth out that kink which I have at the front. So I have a cowslick right in through here. So if I didn't blow dry this, this would have like a real curl and a, and a flick in through here. So I use that to really smooth that out in through the front. And I use something like a clay, something like a, a heavy paste, which then gives it that hold and a matte effect during the whole day then. And it, then it lasts really nicely through the day. Is shaving in reverse harmful? It can be, but for some people it can be great. So for me, if I was to go shave up against the skin or shave up against the grain, I would flare up and my skin would be so delicate. It'd be itchy, it'd be sore, it'd be, I'd get razor burn throughout the day. And it just, for me, for the extra sort of couple of hours closeness that it gets by shaving against the grain, it's just not worth it at all. Some people though, you can go just straight up against the grain and have no irritation. It's, it's knowing what sort of skin and what type of skin type you have and how your hair reacts and how sort of, whether you get spots or not. So by all means you can do it if you're skin reacts well. I know I personally can't do it and and I know a lot of say youngsters also can't do it because the, the skin just can't take it. It's a good option as opposed to going against the grain is actually to come across it. When you come across and if you get some good tension on the skin, coming across can actually get almost as tight as going up against it. Is it true that the skin can get irritated if the blade is shaven over the same space multiple times? Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the reasons why I only use a one blade when I'm shaving. So it cuts down the irritation because there's less blades going over the face. Say if I was to use a, a fusion, a Gillette fusion with like five blades over it. If I was to go over that already once, that's five times more than what I would be using with just using that single blade. So if I was to keep going over it, over it and over it, the amount of blades that have been going over that face then and irritating it, it's massively. I've noticed a big difference in the irritation in my face when only using a single blade as opposed to five or three. No doubt it makes a massive difference in terms of irritation if you keep going over the same place. Have you ever cut yourself when taking the razor out of the package? And yeah, I'm very disappointed to say that I have done that a few times actually. It's never when I've been shaving myself, but it's when I've been shaving someone in the shop or when I've been going to getting the razor out to shave the back of someone's neck. Because what I tend to do is I'll have put product in my hands, put the product in the hair, not probably washed it off properly. You then have to snap the blade when you're using it on someone else because you can only use one of them. And then one of, I've done that a couple of times where like I've gone to snap it, it's slipped and as opposed to it, as, as opposed to it bending and snapping, my fingers are just going straight into it and I've done it on my thumb. I think I did it back end of last year just before we closed down to lockdown actually and it was it was an awful cut I actually had to had to put like a double plaster on it and I had to put a, a hole I had to put like a latex glove over it for the rest of the day as well because it just would not stop bleeding and go, even going through the plaster it was a bit so it's yeah you have to be very careful when you're snapping those ones because that's when, when I'm in the barbershop yeah you have to snap them to be able to use them in the in, in the cutthroat razor so yeah that was Definitely not one of my proudest moments, but I, I'm all, but once you've done it then a couple of times, you you make sure to, to be a lot more careful with it. I'd say probably one of the worst cuts I've ever done actually on myself was when I was was when I was cleaning my my scissors. There's like an oil pen which you put onto the scissors and then that just sort of that helps to, to lubricate it. You can start cleaning it nicely with it. There's then this chamois leather cloth which comes with the scissors. And I remember then like using the cloth and trying to clean it and I then put it onto the blade. And actually as I was I put so much pressure with the with the leather onto the blade that it actually cut straight through the leather and then straight through my thumb as well and that i'll be honest that was awful i remember instantly being like oh no i've messed up here 
I remember that being instantly painful as well because normally when you cut yourself with like a thin razor or something like that, it doesn't hurt you because it's so thin, but you can know that it's happened. I remember that one just hurting straight away and being like, oh no, that's not good. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, because I've done that now with the scissors, I'm, I'm pretty sure I won't do it again because well, you just remember it and you remember, definitely not want to do that again. How often do you change the razor blade? Well, when I'm shaving someone in the shop, I have to use a brand new one every time. You're not allowed to use the same one on other people. So we'll, we'll always change the blade when shaving someone in the shop or when shaving someone when shaving the back of someone's neck. When I'm shaving myself, I actually put a new one in every time as well, just so, just because my skin is delicate. So I want it to be sharp all the time. So I know that I am going to get as close and, and as nice a shave as possible. I don't want to have to sort of think, oh, have I used this a couple of times now? Is there going to be any drag with it? Or is it going to be as sharp as I need it to be? I just put a new one in every time, just because they're, they're really inexpensive as well. So it feels like you can sort of justify it almost. Say if it were on the expensive side or say if they were the same as like, having to pay for like a Gillette one, then yeah, there's no way I'd use one all the time. I think you can get away with sort of having four or five shades with one, especially if your hair is is on the softer side and it doesn't grow crazy quick, then I definitely think you can it can last a, a decent amount of time. And you'll be able to feel it, like you can feel on your skin if it's starting to pull or if it doesn't feel like it's cutting it super clean. If, it's, if you feel anything like that, then just change it out and put a new one in. But the last thing you want to do is shaving them with a dull blade because that's just a, a horrible experience. How do you know what way your facial hair grows? Now, I thought this was a really simple one, but loads of people have actually asked me this. And like, how do you know where the growth pattern is? And I just thought it was it was quite a simple thing. But actually, yeah, clearly it's not. What you want to do is let your hair grow out on your face for a few days. Let it be sort of maybe four or five days so you actually can see where the hair is and not just sort of like stubble. Maybe if, if that takes a little bit longer, if it takes a week, then let it let, let it then let it grow out for a week or so. And then what you'll start to see is the way that the hair sits down and the growth patterns and the way that they then form. So when I look up in the mirror, I can see that all of this hair starts to grow really up underneath here. It then comes across in this direction. It comes then all of the rest of this comes down. And once it's got a bit of length to it, you'll actually be able to see where it wants to sit. So you'll be able to see, oh, well, that hair grows down in that way. And this and this hair comes up through there. I've got this hair underneath there, which is sort of like at the top of my chest. And you can see that that actually grows upwards in there. So let it grow out a little bit. Once you then know where the growth pattern is, you can then shave with the growth pattern if you have any irritation. Because it's mainly guys who where the growth pattern is all over the place that get the irritation. Generally on guys where it just all grows straight down or very simple, they don't get any irritation. It's, it's guys like, like myself where it grows up in different ways where you get the, the redness and the spots. Okay, guys, thanks so much for watching today. If you have enjoyed that, don't forget to give it a little thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, click that little button right now. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions and if you want me to answer any of them in, in one of these shows, drop the comment down below and I'll be answering them next week. Have a brilliant rest of your day, guys. Much love, Elliot.